Hi everybody! So as of today, I am 34 weeks and six days pregnant. Um, sorry it's been a little while again, um, but we've had lots of appointments to go to and loads of stuff to do. Um, so kicking it off, over the last couple of weeks, Tom and I attended our antenatal classes which was quite exciting. It's been something that I've been looking forward to uh, for a while. Basically, you could either do sort of the NHS classes, uh, which were free, but we opted to do uh, some private classes, which we paid a fee for, which were run by the NCT, which is the National Childcare Trust. Um, so it was at a local nursery, which was literally a one minute drive down the road from us. So it was super, duper convenient for Tom and I um, and when we went we met some other couples that were there um, most of them were having their first baby so it's really really lovely getting to know um, a number of different couples that are basically in the exact same position as Tom and I which is we were all having a baby <laughs> um, so the first week the classes were quite long actually they ran from 10 till 4 which was actually quite a long time for me because you basically spent most of the day sort of sat in quite hard chairs or on the floor or you would basically ask to bring a birthing ball with you. Um, unfortunately for me, because I've got a really bad back at the moment, I need something that supports my back but also isn't rock hard and basically bruises up my bum. So it was a very long day, but the first day was basically focused on birthing in general. So we were learning about different birthing positions, uh, stages of labour, uh, basically what to expect. Um, I didn't feel like I learned loads in that class, mainly because I've read so many books on pregnancy and birth that I think in a couple of areas it only just added to my knowledge a little bit. Uh, but there were some very useful exercises. We did some sort of like um, like assisted breathing or assisted meditation, I guess I would call it, where basically, you know, we were tired. We basically sort of like zoned out and did some <sighs> deep breathing. <laughs> Um, they taught the women the different birthing positions, they taught the guys how to give massages for each position and then at the end of the class you got to choose your favourite birthing position and then your partner or boyfriend, husband basically spent the class, well the end of the class sort of massaging you in that position and it was absolutely lovely um, because since the class my, my partner Tom basically offers me a massage all the time you know I'd just be like do you want a massage babe do you want a massage babe and I'm like <laughs> yeah <laughs> um the only thing he doesn't offer me is foot massages and my feet are getting super sore now if I'm on my feet for too long they are getting pretty achy and I would really appreciate some foot massage so Tom feet <laughs> um the next week we went back on the Friday and we did a class from seven till nine, which was solely on breastfeeding. And if I'm perfectly honest, out of the three sessions that we have done uh, as part of the course, the breastfeeding for me was by far the most useful. Mainly because it's the thing that I'm worrying about the most. So I'm worried about breastfeeding in public, whether I'm gonna enjoy it or whether I'm just gonna think it's weird. Um, am I gonna be able to do it properly? Um, am I going to get too stressed out about it? And the woman who ran the class was absolutely amazing. She was so chilled and happy and talkative and she talked us through like how to get a good latch, um, basically like troubleshooting as well. So if something's not working, you've got a checklist of things to, you know, try to help you. She talked us through all the numerous support lines that are available to breastfeeding mums. And do you know what? It just reassured me that if I am struggling when I do it, it's just gonna be, well, there's just gonna be so many people out there that can give you support and it's, it's amazing. And it's just made me feel so much better about the whole thing. And I'm actually really, really excited to do it for the first time as well. But it was really important that the men were there 
because if you are struggling at home, it's nice to have a partner who, you know, maybe attended the course with you, who can, when maybe when you're losing your mind, you're tired and you're sore and you're cracked and who can just take you back to basics and just talk you through everything again and reassure you that you're, you know, you're doing everything that you can uh, correctly. Um, so the final session, which was on another Saturday, which was 10 till four again, was basically what's gonna happen after birth. So we're not talking about just right after the baby pops out and stuff. We're talking like when you get the baby home, um, bathing the baby, changing the baby's nappy, parenting styles and all sorts. Um, but we have got a WhatsApp group going. So all the mums are in their own little WhatsApp group and we're all messaging each other and um, talking to each other because one of the mums actually couldn't attend the second uh, week because she had her baby um, and she had a tiny, tiny little baby girl who was like just over four pounds and she sent pictures and she is just literally the cutest little baby. She is so small. Um, so I think everybody else is just really excited to have their babies too. But the awesome thing is that the lady who did leave the course, um, she's basically arranged a reunion date. So on the 4th of November, and I'll remember that date because it's the day before firework day, the Guy Fawkes night. On the 4th of November, we're going to a pub, which is again, like down the road from me. And we basically get to sit with our babies and just talk about our experiences and have a catch up, which is just amazing. And then hopefully, you know, we'll all continue seeing each other because, you know, being on maternity sometimes, um, I suppose can be a little bit lonely. Um, if you, you know, you don't get out and see people a lot. So it'd be nice to sort of, you know, create some lasting friendships as well. Um, I am officially on maternity now, which is exciting. I started my maternity on Thursday last week and I've been really, really busy because I had my baby shower on Sunday and I got so much stuff, so much stuff. Just, it, it was crazy, but it was such an amazing day. Everybody was so lovely. I'm basically organizing all the stuff today so that I can do a haul this week and show you everything that I got. Because literally, I think I'm just gonna spend the next few weeks on my maternity leave just sorting through and resorting through all the stuff for the baby because I'm just getting so excited at the prospect of seeing him and everything. I'm so happy. Um, and I'm getting more and more nervous about the idea of like giving birth. Um, as I've mentioned a few times, I've had problems with my back and hips. Um, the doctor has given me an official diagnosis of SPD or PGP, um, as well as other sort of back problems. So I've been seeing a chiropractor for the last two weeks. He's basically been adjusting my back for me, um, which is lovely. Um, does make you feel like you're walking on air when you come out, but eventually because of all the relaxing, everything sort of just slips back out of place and stuff and it's quite painful to move around. Um, because I had some difficulty getting into some of the birthing positions when I was at my antenatal class, I discussed this with my midwife and my doctor and my midwife has basically uh, referred me to an anaesthetist. So I should be getting an appointment coming through the post this week to go see an anaesthetist to basically discuss my options. Now, loosely, I think what those kind of options are is that when I go into labor, they are pretty sure that I will ask for an epidural, not just because of the contractions, because of the back pain that I've got and the problems with my hips. So they're basically saying that an anaesthetist basically has to be on standby. They're doing my weights and all my measurements now. I don't know why, because I've got a while to go yet, but they're getting everything ready. There has to be one on standby when I'm at the hospital. Um, and I'm guessing the other option is obviously going for a scheduled C-section. The guy's basically, or guy or lady, sorry, is basically going to assess me and see how bad everything is. And I think they'll basically you know, offer me a choice I still don't know what choice I'm gonna make. I, I literally, there's pros and cons to 
both. I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards that I want to I want to push because I've carried him for you know eight months so far and I just feel for me like it's a rite of passage but if you know if the doctors feel that things may not go right then obviously you know I'm gonna go for whatever's safest for me and my baby so yeah so we've got that so this week we'll look at what is going on with my with my little baby and I'm terrible because I never like read this before I actually turn the camera on um, so he weighs about five pounds and he's about 17.72 inches long so he's getting a long baby um, by this time most of his lanugo which is like the fluffy body hair that they have when they're in the womb is gone um, and his immune system is no longer relying on the antibodies from the placenta um, he's basically creating some kind of like self-immunity um, the vernix which is on his skin is continuing to disappear and his digestive system is fully working now and get this he is peeing up to a pint of urine into the amniotic fluid a day that's crazy a pint um, so even though the placenta is now capable of supporting the baby until birth, it will start to age this week, which is crazy that something just stays around the same age where you spend like the first X amount of time growing it and then it starts to age. Um, and that's what happens when you go, um, overdue they're more monitoring the placenta because if the placenta starts to disintegrate it can come away from the wall uh, which isn't good so it starts to age a bit this week so it says if you've been grimacing over your weight gain over these last few weeks you can relax because your weight gain is about to slow down i definitely noticed that a lot i'm eating less i shouldn't be eating less but i am eating less because i just can't fit food in um, but baby's still busy packing on the pounds. So it says, even though you're eating smaller meals, which, yeah, I am, uh, heartburn and indigestion may still be bothering you, so avoid, avoid tight clothing and sleep with your head uh, propped up. Now, I've had, like, really, really bad heartburn all the time, and suddenly over the last sort of three days or so, it has come off. Now, you may remember in a previous video I said that it just suddenly dissipated a bit and that was because the baby turned so he went head down so there was a lot less pressure on the upper part of my stomach um, but now the fact that it's lessened at this stage may be because he's beginning to get engaged which is when his head sinks a bit lower into your pelvis getting ready for birth um, I'm not seeing the midwife this week I am seeing the midwife next week so obviously she'll have a feel and you know we can see if my guess is correct and she's also coming around to do my birth plan which is really really exciting so hopefully i'll have seen the anaesthetist by then we'll have discussed the options and then we'll put that into my birth plan as well and i've also got the health visitor coming this friday so she's going to come over to the house uh, meet me give me my baby's red book which is all his medical records and etc which i'm excited to fill in as well um, but yeah, other than that, I can't think of anything else that sort of happened. Oh, yes, I can. So obviously we've been talking about the fact that I've had an, like an enormous amount of water retention. My feet, it is dissipated so much. Like I can still see that my feet are just slightly fat, but that in literally nothing compared to what it was like before it's literally over the last week or so just chilled right out which i'm really happy with <laughs> i was just like thank god um so yeah i can actually even wear normal shoes now i think but i'm still sticking to my flip-flops just in case i don't want to tempt fate so what i will show you is i will show you my belly <laughs> and you'll have to see if you can see me behind the sofa because this is a little bit of an awkward setup the camera is balanced on a couple of <laughs> the the camera is balanced on six cans of vimpdo and a box of oranges 
<laughs> so there we go. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to get out from behind this table so carefully. Oh, should I get a bit closer? Can you see? Yes, you can. Okay, so here is my belly with my top on, and here is my belly with my top off. So it's coming along. I have had a couple of people tell me that I'm carrying low, which apparently is a boy thing, and he, we know he's a boy. So that's my belly from that side. From the front, lots of stretch marks down here. And then from the other side. So yeah, 34 weeks. So, okay, I'm going to leave things here because I've got a nursery full of stuff to get organized for the haul that I'm gonna do. I have no idea how I'm gonna get through it all, but I'm gonna have to. Um, so thank you for tuning in this week and I will see you very soon. So thank you for tuning in guys. Um, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you wanna see some more. And it was lovely seeing you all. Bye.